back to Pastor Connie's Cats of Creativity. Today is a day that we are going to step back in time into the Old Testament and look at the story of the Israelites as they are wandering through the wilderness. So the next series through our summer months is going to be called Lessons in the Wilderness. So I'm glad you're with me today and I hope you stay with me all summer as we look at the lessons that we can find that the Israelites learned while they wandered in their wilderness and we can see how it connects to our lives and what we're experiencing in our lives today. So what you're going to need for today's activities is we're going to make this really fun little puppety guy who's going to help us with our memory verse and um, during craft time I'll have a list of supplies but you need three straws and then your digital download has this little template you can cut out, a cup, and tape and that's all and then we're gonna make our little be strong and courageous little friend as well as our digital downloads also have our worship bulletins today's story is not super familiar so you do have a worship bulletin but it doesn't have the extra games today but you can still do the bulletin and have fun with that and here's the template as well as make sure you get your Bible because we're going to be in the book of Exodus and it's a great story. So make sure you have your Bibles out so you can follow along with me. Today our, our point is God is always with us. We're going to repeat this during our time together and I want you to remember this is a, a thing to remember right now is that God is with you no matter how you feel or what you're experiencing to rem remind yourself of this great point that God is always with us. All right, so gather your supplies and then we're gonna come back here with some music and then have fun together learning our story. All right, see you soon. In the Gospel of Luke, there's a story of Jesus coming down off the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and they are rejoicing, and the Pharisees see them rejoicing and celebrating, and they say, hey, you should tell your disciples to stop, stop, um, stop praising you. And Jesus says in Luke 19, verse 40, if my disciples don't cry out, if they don't sing, then these rocks are going to start singing. So this song is called Ain't No Rock. You ready? It goes like this. Ain't no bird and ain't no tree, because instead of the tree, the bird, and the rock singing, we are going to sing. And I'm going to do some motions too, so stand up and follow the motions, and let's, let's have it. <laughs> Here we go. Ain't no rock.
but not let those rocks and trees and and birds cry out. One. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He, he will never leave or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.16 Today for our craft, we are going to make some peekaboo, be strong and courageous. So what we're going to do is we're going to remember our memory verse with this little activity. What you need is a paper cup. I have a nice Starbucks cup and you need three straws, especially ones that are bendy like this. And if you notice, I have all three straws right here and I have cut two of my straws in half. So I actually only need, well, only three. But you're going to have one full straw and then two that are cut in half and you want the half with the bendy part okay you also are going to need some markers or some crayons tape scissors and your digital download make sure you print this out and this is your little the little creature we're going to create today all right so here's how you do it you're gonna take your little your little friend and we're gonna cut them up. I have one for if you have a sister or a brother, you can both share paper and just print out one. So first we're gonna cut them out. We have our two little paws and our little face. And now we need to choose a color. What do we want our little friend um, to look like? I'm going to have my friend match my green cup. So I'm gonna color him or her. I don't know, maybe it'll be her. I'm gonna color her green. And now you're gonna color your little, and it could be different colors. You get creative with this part. Color your new little friend, your be strong and courageous friend, whatever color you would like. We have his little head and two little hands. You're going to take our cup, and I've already pre-done um, my holes, but you're gonna want a hole on this side and a hole on this side, because our hands are gonna come right out the side of the hole, and a hole on the bottom. So go ahead and do a hole in the bottom, and one hole on each side. And then we're gonna take our three straws, and we want to trim about, let's make, do an inch and a half, on the top one and the bottom one. All right, looks like that. And then we're going to take our our tape. We're going to tape the top part together like this. my dog he barks at every sound okay so now you have um, three straws that are taped together and we one straw the long straw is gonna go all the way to the bottom so what I did last time was I, I squeezed it and I kind of folded it so that it has a little bit more of a point and then it's a little bit easier to go through the bottom <laughs> a little bit easier huh. okay once you have that one, then we're going to, these are our hands. So we want to somehow get them inside our side holes. 
without pulling it out of the bottom. Which is kind of tricky. Okay. okay, so she'll look something like that. Now we're going to get our new little friend and we're going to tape and tape the face on. And he's gonna help us remember, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. The Lord your God goes with you. Be strong and courageous. Okay. Now we have our face on, and now we need our little hands. I'm going to tape one hand here. Now this works really good if you have a nice long bendy straw, but mine doesn't have very much bend to it. You can see them go up and down. So first we need little hands. I'm gonna cut these down a little bit more. Sorry. And now I'm gonna tape on my hands. One hand. Two hands. Do you have two hands? Okay. And now we have a little friend saying, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. Ah! Did you make a little friend today? Hello. Hello. Don't be afraid. Don't be don't be worried or fearful because the Lord your God is with you. Woo! This summer, I'd like to teach you some spiritual practices. These are practices that can help you um, connect with God in a deeper, more profound way. These are practices that I do, and so I want to share them with you this summer. So every week during our time together as we study the people of Israel, as they're, the Israelites as they're traveling in the wilderness, we're also going to be looking at some spiritual practices that you can do at home. Today, our spiritual practice is the practice of meditation. So what I want you to do, I want to show you this little trick to teach you how important it is to really just spend time soaking in God's presence and his word and listening to the voice of God. So what I have before you is I have one, two, three, four, five, six different cups. This sixth cup, I already have water in it. It's cold water. And then I have this nice piping hot, just boiled pot of hot water. So I'm going to pour hot water into the other five cups. One. Two, three, four, and five. Meditation, the practice of meditation is not fast. It takes time to sit and soak. Now what I have is I have three tea bags. These are black tea bags. These are Earl Grey, yum, yum. And I'm gonna put one Earl Grey tea bag in the cold cup and one Earl Grey tea bag in another hot cup, in a hot cup. And then I'm going to use this bag to just move it between cup to cup. Now the, the instructions on the tea bag says seep for three minutes. So I'm just gonna let them seep. So what we're gonna see happen is that this tea bag that's really gonna soak is probably gonna get a whole lot darker. But we'll look at that and see. The practice of meditation is when you reflect, you stop and you think about a scripture or a word, a phrase. So what I want you to do this week is to think about our memory verse. You can write your memory verse down and then look at it and think about what parts of it kind of 
the word resonate sort of like makes you <clears throat> feel it. What part of the, of the verse do you feel more than the others? And then write that word down or that phrase down. Or if you've written the whole memory verse out, you can just circle it. And then meditation, you, I like to close my eyes because I get distracted by things. So I'll close my eyes and I'll just think about that word or that phrase. And I'll just let that word or that phrase sort of go from here to here. And I'll be really still. Have you ever bought a balloon from the store and they, they put the balloon on a string and then they give you a weight to keep the balloon from blowing away? If you, if you cut the string, the balloon goes woo all the way up to the sky, right? But if you have that weight, that weight, no matter where the balloon blows, it will stay by that weight because it's tied to it. In meditation, it kind of brings you back to that weight because God is our anchor. So as we're quiet, we kind of come back, our balloon comes back to the center, to, to God. Okay, let's check out our, our tea bags. Look over here. So here we have our, our cold tea bag. See that water? It's a little bit colored, but not super much. And this is our super dark tea bag. Look how much darker that water is. And then we have these teas, much lighter. And if I were to drink it, I would guess these don't taste like much. Because we did put our, our tea bag in it, but they didn't get a chance to totally soak. Psalm 119, 15 through 16 says, I meditate on your precepts and I consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Through meditation, we get quiet. And if this is like the word or the phrase you're gonna be thinking about, we drop it into our water. That's you and me, we're the water. And we let it just sit there. And the longer it sits there, the more it changes the water. Now, this one is cold water and it didn't change much. How we're approaching, how we're receiving God's word and his voice will determine if we're going to soak it in or we just reading it and it kind of comes in one ear, goes out the other. That's this water. It's kind of cold. But if we're receptive, if we're really warm, we're saying, Jesus, speak to me with this word. Help me hear you. And we're letting, our, letting God come into our space and fill up the water with his presence. Then he is speaking to us and we're meditating on his word, on a phrase, or even just one word. Like we can talk about our father in heaven, holy is your name. We could just think about what does that mean? Our father in heaven, our father, my father. What does all that mean? And spend time thinking about it and asking God to show you what those phrases mean. So use your memory verse this week and practice Soaking in the memory verse, letting it change your water so you can reflect Jesus even better. The practice of meditation. Woo, welcome. Today I am in the hot, hot sun. Kind of like being in a desert. So last week, we talked about the Holy Spirit coming on the disciples and the apostles in the upper room and then breathing life into the early church in the book of Acts. Today is the first Sunday of June, and we're going to jump all the way back in time to the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, there is still fire like the Holy Spirit, and God is still at work. So do you remember last year, we talked about this guy named Moses. Moses, remember we did, we talked about Moses being in the land of Egypt and him talking to Pharaoh and saying, Pharaoh, God wants you to let his people go. And then God sends plagues to the, to the Egyptians and then Pharaoh lets the people go. Well, that's as far as we got last year. And so this year, we're going to pick up where we left uh, Moses and the Israelites. And this summer, we're gonna wander through the desert with the Israelites. 
They actually walked around the desert for 40 years. 40 years. Can you imagine that? They left their homes and then they wandered around with no home for 40 years. We're not going to talk about this story that long, but we are going to read it for the next 13 weeks. All right. So the book, the story about the Israelites and Moses uh -oh, takes place in the book of Exodus. 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 And the book of Exodus talks about, this is the main character, Moses. And he is the leader of the people of God, the Israelites. And that's what we're going to study for the next few weeks this summer. So we're going to turn today to Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. Chapter 13 verse 17. So what's happened so far, as I just said, is we've had all these, God has sent all these plagues to Egypt, and the last plague has come. The firstborn of every kind has been killed, and Pharaoh has told the people, you know what? Get out of Egypt. So in their haste, in their hurry, they picked up whatever they could, and the Israelites, the people of God, with Moses leading the way, they escape they left Egypt so this is where our story begins today verse 17 says Pharaoh he was the guy that's in charge of Egypt Pharaoh let the people go the shortest road from Goshen to Canaan went through the Philistine country but God didn't lead them that way who's leading God is leading huh God didn't lead them that way. God said, if they have to go into battle, they might change their minds and they might return to Egypt. So instead, God led the people toward the Red Sea by taking them on a road through the desert. Let's check out our map and see what in the world I'm talking about. So the people of Israel start right here in the land of Goshen. And God knows that the shortest way from Goshen up here to Canaan is through the land of the Philistines. But he also knows the Philistines like to keep their land safe by battling off foreigners. So he's not sure that this, this group of Israelites wants to have a battle. So instead, God decides to lead the people down through the desert, around the peninsula, and then up to Canaan. So God actually leads the people from Goshen down toward the Red Sea. See this finger here of the Red Sea? This kind of leads up to where they're at and they have to cross right here at the Red Sea. The Israelites, they were prepared for battle when they went out of Egypt, but God didn't want them to have to fight yet. The people left Succoth, that's where they were staying in Egypt, and they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. So they're just about to leave Egypt. And then verse 21 picks up. This is the cool part. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. So during the day, God is leading his people with this huge cloud. And then at night, he led them with a pillar of fire. It gave them light so they could travel by day or at night. So during the day, they would follow this cloud and at night, they would follow a fire. Here's an artist who drew a picture of what he thought or she thought maybe this might have looked like. So here's all the people of Israel, the Israelites in all their tents, and there's this flame. Now this actually looks like it might be the tabernacle, but there's this fire that is present with the people at night, as well as during the day, there's this cloud that is leading the people during the day. And both these two elements, the, the fire and the cloud, is a reminder that God is with them and not just with them, but he's going before his people and they do not need to be afraid. I saw this great little cartoon 
looks like a little boy. He's pointing to the cloud. He says, hey mom, better finish dinner because looks like the cloud's on the move. Can you imagine what that would be like to be one of the people of Israel? You kind of just watch the cloud and when the cloud moves up, it's time to pack up. Put the tent down, roll up your sleeping bags, put all the all the cooking supplies back in the boxes and let's, let's put, the, put everything on the mule and let's get moving. They're constantly packing up, setting up camp and then tearing it down and moving out. When the cloud moves, when the fire moves, the people of God would pack up and follow the cloud, follow the fire. We ended our um, story in New Testament with the Holy Spirit coming and even Matthew 28 talking about I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And that's been true even from the very beginning. God has been with his people. And these two cloud, the cloud and the fire is a reminder that God is with us. They are right on the edge of the wilderness and God gives them this fire and this cloud as a reminder that as you step out into this hot, hot space and feel like oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, remember, there's a visual reminder that I am with you. I'm not sure how you're feeling right now with being home with your mom and your dad, your family, not getting to go to school, not seeing friends, but it feels like you're kind of in this funny spot of what's happening. And if you kind of feel like those Israelites where you're saying, God, are you even with me? I see, sometimes I see violence and I see scary things happening and I just don't know, are you here, God? We need to look at this story and remind ourselves that God promises to always be with us. Today, our memory verse comes from Deuteronomy 31, 6. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. God is with you. He will never leave you nor will he forsake you. That doesn't mean that life is great and everything is lovely all the time. But it means that we can rest and have peace knowing that God is with us. And when you are afraid, you can say, Jesus, show me that you're with me. Show me that you're with me, that you have not forsaken me. And I pray this week when you pray that prayer, you will feel God's presence with you and know deep in here that you are not alone. Okay, so that's our story today. And I'm excited this summer as we, I'm gonna do these stories every day in the hot, hot heat to remind us of how hard life is sometimes. But to remind us to, as we're looking at these stories of the Israelites wandering in this desert land, that they see God with them, no matter where they go and what they experience. God is always right there providing and being near his people. So I look forward to our summer together as we talk about the Israelites wandering the desert. And you and I are gonna wander the desert with them as we look for themes or lessons in the wilderness that we can learn from and we can put faith and trust in God for. All right, I'm gonna pray. Jesus, I thank you that you are with us and that no matter what desert we are in, if we feel like we are in the middle of a space where we feel so alone, or we feel like we're in a place where there's uh, there's no trees and no, no water, and we just feel thirsty and hungry and sad, I pray God that you would remind us that you are with us. We don't need to be afraid. I pray that you would be with my friends this week, that we would be able to put our faith and our trust in you, and that you would show us in very real ways how you're with us. Be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. So this summer we are going to be wilderness explorers and after each session together we are going to get badges that um, we can put on our nice little t-shirt here and collect and see how many badges we can collect by the end of our summer together. Each badge represents the challenge or the thing that we've learned together during our time. So this first badge is a Wilderness Explorer badge because we are all signed up to be Wilderness Explorers as we follow along with the Israelites 
through their own wilderness and look and see what did they experience and how did they learn to trust God? How can, what do we learn about God while we watch them in their wilderness and how does it connect to our wilderness that we're experiencing? So we also are wilderness explorers. Let's put this on first. And then this week, we also heard the story about the Israelites following the cloud by day and the fire by night. So we're gonna get this fun following God badge. And the third badge we're gonna get today is the tea bag badge. We talked about the spiritual practice of meditation. So this is our meditation badge. The wilderness must be explored. Car, car, we will see you next time and see how many badges we get next week.